Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting discovery of a very unusual galaxy and more specifically a very unusual quasar. A quasar galaxy that also seems to be producing quite a lot of stars, which by definition at least doesn't actually make it a quasar, it makes it something entirely different. But let's talk a little bit more about this in more detail because once again this is a pretty interesting story. Now first of all, we really need to talk about starburst galaxies. These are really really bright galaxies with a lot of activity around the galaxy, which essentially is the sign of various types of stars being produced extremely actively, usually with the rate of at least 50 to maybe 100 times more stars per year than in our own galaxy. And today we think that this is a result of potentially a collision with another galaxy where a lot of gas is suddenly introduced into the new galaxy and starts to clump up, creating these very large starburst regions. The nearest starburst region to us, or at least the most famous one, is the region inside the Large Magellanic Cloud known as the Tarantula Nebula. This is actually where we have some of the most famous and also some of the most massive stars we've ever discovered. One of the stars here has a mass of about 300 masses of the Sun. And so today we think that these starburst regions and also these starburst galaxies is basically how most of the stars in most of the galaxies are produced, including of course how the sun was produced sometime about four and a half billion years ago. But at the same time there's this really interesting interaction between the galaxy itself and the creation of stars in the galaxy and the central black hole. We're not entirely sure why, but sometimes when too much mass or too much gas is introduced into the certain region of a certain galaxy, especially the region where the supermassive black hole is located to begin with, it can actually create what's known as a quasar, which we think might look something like this, but it's probably a lot more powerful and also a lot more bright. From a distance though, it does look like a typical star, which is why they're sort of known as the quasi-stars or QSO, which stands for quasi-stellar object. Now, quasars in general are known to be some of the most powerful, the brightest and also some of the most extreme objects in the universe. So extreme that we can usually see them from literally the edge of the universe. And because of this, these objects are, well, first of all, kind of well understood, but also at the same time, produce such ridiculous amounts of energy that they can literally extinguish the galaxy. They can make the galaxy stop producing any star. And all of this starts happening during the tremendous amount of energy that's being released by the interaction between the black hole and the accretion disk. A lot of the extra gas that's being blown out by the black hole and also by the accretion disk itself ends up creating what's known as the blowout effect. And this effect ends up leaving the center of the galaxy and sort of spreads across the entire galaxy with time. Which then also leads to these so-called galactic winds, which basically warm up all of the gas in the galaxy. And this is where in some sense the galaxy stops making stars, because the gas starts to be extremely overheated, none of the gas particles have any chance to come closer together, they're too active and they're too hot. And eventually this creates a lot of hot gas everywhere in the galaxy that's unable to clump and essentially create stars. And because of this the galaxy slowly stops producing stars altogether. In some sense you can basically just call it a um, dead galaxy. And so pretty much all of the quasars we've discovered so far are this type of galaxy. When the galaxy goes through this quasar stage, it basically extinguishes production of stars and eventually leads to just the a somewhat dim galaxy that only has the remnant ancient stars left in it. No new stars are produced here. It can actually restart the formation of stars if, for example, it collides with another galaxy, but until that happens, normally the galaxy just remains, in some sense, a somewhat unexciting place. No new activity happens here, the overall brightness also decreases with time, and eventually this galaxy could potentially just dim away completely. Although chances are it's still going to have a lot of red dwarfs and a lot of other smaller dimmer stars. Which is usually why these older galaxies also have this strange orangey color. They're essentially just filled with a lot of really old stars and cannot produce any new stars which are normally either white or blue in color. So in other words, these quasar stages are almost like the end of life for a galaxy. Or at least we thought so until this recent discovery, with the somewhat captivating title of Dying of the Light. Because it seems that the scientists studying this particular quasar discovered that, well, on top of being a quasar, it also seems to be a starburst galaxy. 
the quasar that you see right here, a relatively difficult to see galaxy known as CQ4479. Now this is actually pretty far away from us, it's about 5 or actually over 5 billion light years away from us. But nevertheless, we're able to see that it's a quasar, it does produce a lot of activity in the center, and it also seems to have signs of starburst activity as well. Which makes this, so far at least, the only object we've discovered so far that's both an active galactic nucleus galaxy with a very powerful quasar, with the overall brightness of roughly around 200 billion suns, while also still being a starburst galaxy that produces about 95 masses of the sun per year. And that's more than 50 times more stars per year than our own galaxy produces. And what's really amazing about this particular study is that the scientists here were able to calculate a lot of things with a lot of precision, including how much mass the black hole is absorbing, how much mass is used to produce the stars, and also, of course, the mass of the black hole in the middle as well, with the black hole in the center of this galaxy being roughly around 24 million masses of the sun, which is around 5, actually more like 6 times more massive than the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. And the reason it's so bright and is visible from 5 billion light years away from us is also because it's absorbing about 0.3 masses of the sun per year by basically just absorbing all of this inside the black hole. But naturally, the mystery here is how is it that it's both a quasar and something completely opposite, a starburst galaxy? Why is it that the quasar has not actually created these outbursts and these so-called blowout winds which usually extinguish galaxies and prevent them from producing stars? Well, I guess to start answering this question, we first have to understand that the galaxy itself was most likely a result of a recent collision between at least two galaxies. And that's of course why it even has the starburst activity to begin with. But it's also possible that some of the gas ended up in the center of the galaxy where it's now being absorbed by the black hole. Which of course could explain both the starburst activity and the central black hole activity. But the observations from the starburst activity suggest that it's probably been going on for maybe 200 to even 500 million years, whereas the central black hole has only been active for about 50 million years. In other words, it's possible that it just hasn't really extinguished the star activity just yet. It might have just not really had a chance to make this gas too hot. It will probably happen with time. As a matter of fact, the scientists in this paper do suggest that this is just a first stage of the quasar activity. Or maybe, for all we know, this galaxy is just shaped very strangely. A large part of the galaxy is on the outskirts, and it's basically unaffected by whatever is happening in the center. Now, obviously, here I'm showing you a very typical um, ring galaxy, but it could be something similar to this or something that has very unusual morphology that essentially just allows it to be both a quasar and a starburst galaxy. Although chances are a much better explanation is that we're just looking at a very, very early stage of the formation of a very powerful quasar that's only going to get more powerful with time. Maybe it's just not powerful enough yet to extinguish the entire galaxy. And given enough time, it will become a typical quasar after all. But I guess for now we don't really have a good explanation, and it's yet another mystery to add to the mystery box of the universe. Yet another mysterious, powerful quasar somewhere out there in the universe. Now if you'd like to learn more, check out the paper in the description below. And also subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. And before you ask, not sponsored by Factorio, but this is a Factorio shirt I got a few years ago from one of the developers, and I absolutely love this shirt. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.